In this second lecture on, on spatial uh, exploratory data analysis, I want to talk about uh, spatial autocorrelation and spatial covariance. Uh, so if we continue on with the example we've been talking about where we had um, a, a surface, we, we had points, we had attributes associated with them, and we, we first started by fitting uh, this, this uh, surface. Um, in R, we can calculate uh, a spatial autocorrelation function uh, using the correlogram function where we pass in uh, that what came out of that uh, least squared surface uh, detrending effort and some number of bins. Uh, and so spatial autocorrelation as a concept is completely analogous to, to, to temporal autocorrelation, which we've seen a lot of both in time series analysis and then uh, you know, the autocorrelation calculations that we've been doing in MCMC output. Uh, so like in, in time at, at distance zero, uh, autocorrelation is one, uh, data is perfectly correlated with itself. Uh, but then as we move outward in space, um, our correlations uh, will tend to decline. In this case, we're declining towards zero. And in this case, it's a, you know, it comes down to having a slight negative correlation before coming back up to, to zero correlation. Um, the calculation of, of spatial correlation is, has a lot in common uh, with the calculations we did for Ripley's K. Uh, so you know, you're going to start, you're going to loop over every point, and then for every point you're going to uh, calculate uh, at different distance spins the correlation uh, between the attribute at, of that point uh, and uh, the attribute of the points within these kind of donut rings. And then going to repeat that for every point uh, in the data set and kind of give us a, a, an average correlation uh, as a function of distance. So, you know, the, the correlation coefficient between a point and all points, you know, in the, you know, I don't know how many points we have here, maybe in the point one bin, the point two bin, the point three bin, the point four bin, and five and so on. Um, yeah. And so that's the, the concept of spatial autocorrelation is, is the same as, uh, as temporal autocorrelation. And there's this handy R function and, and other functions exist in, in other languages and other R packages. They can do this calculation as well. Uh, as with Ripley's K, the, the standard method for estimating uh, a, an interval estimate uh, is going to be using some sort of uh, non-parametric bootstrap where we're just uh, you know, very often uh, keeping the spatial locations but uh, bootstrapping the, uh, the attributes associated with it. So we randomly re-perturb and resample uh, the attributes associated with those points. So here is a, a non-parametric bootstrap uh, interval estimate for the null model. Uh, for uh, that, that map we looked at before. So we see that even in the null model, data is perfectly correlated with itself at lag zero, uh, but then you know, the mean correlation drops to zero instantly in the, in the null model, but with some variability around it because you know, there's, uh, you know, correlations are gonna uh, occur by chance. So in this case, we can see there's uh, significant positive autocorrelation than data up to a distance about four, and then a significant negative autocorrelation in this data, uh, you know, from about five to eight. So it's positively autocorrelated at one scale and negatively autocorrelated at another scale. Uh, for various historical reasons, uh, in addition to calculating correlation coefficients, uh, geostatistics in involves the correlation, the, the, the generation of what's called a, a variogram or a semi-variogram, uh, which captures a lot of the same information as a spatial correlation coefficient, uh, but does it in a, a slightly different way. Um, so first I'll explain how it's done, which is very similar to a, a correlation coefficient, uh, and then how to interpret these diagrams. So first, what's going to happen is, you know, like with the spatial correlation, we're going to go through 
uh, all the points in our data set. We're going to look at points, uh, loop over points, and then loop over uh, points that show up within distance bins. Uh, but now, instead of calculating the correlation between po two points in a distance bin, we're going to calculate what's called a, a semivariance. So remember, a variance is uh, in the sum, in the, uh, you know, the, the sum of squared uh, differences between a point in the mean divided by n. Uh, here, we're going to, instead of getting the, the sum of squared differences between the mean, we're going to actually get the sum of squared differences between uh, the two points. So you, know, you might have a reference point i, and then as you loop over all the other points in various distance spins, uh, you calculate the square difference between i and j for their attribute. Uh, and then you do this over all the, the points in that distance spin and then norm, you know, calculate, you know, uh, divide that by the number of points in that distance spin in order to get a mean. Uh, so this, this gamma of d will have units that are in terms, the same units as variance, but it's actually a semi-variance because again, we're not calculating the distance between difference between the mean, we're calculating the difference between the points. Um, and so if we plot that as a function of distance, we'll often get a, a, a plot that looks like this one here. So in reality, they're never really this smooth. Uh, one of the main attributes of this variogram uh, is what's called the sill. And the sill uh, is where the uh, semi-variogram will asymptote to. So here, you know, this sill is at, you know, 0.8. And important to know, again, is the units on uh, the y-axis here are units of variance. So, you know, remember, correlation coefficients have to be between minus 1 and 1, but variance can take on any units depending on the variance of the data. In fact, you can kind of, you would expect a sill to asymptote to the background variance of the data. So this is kind of the, you know, the overall variance in the data. And then what we're seeing is that at distances uh, at shorter distances, that points are are less variable uh, than you would expect by chance. So there's less variance than the background variance at lower distances. So if the sill is the asymptote that you go to, uh, the other you know, obvious attribute of interest is would be the what's called the range, the distance to when you hit that asymptote. You know that said, many of the functions that you would fit this sort of data are, are actually truly asymptotic, so they don't actually have a specific range that, that you might, you know, assume some threshold, like, you know, when you're within 99% of the asymptote. Uh, but you, you know, you get the general idea. You know, at what distance uh, are you really not di different than your uh, asymptotic background variance? And so that would tell you the distances at which you are, are autocorrelated. So in this case, we're uh, we're seeing a reduction in variance uh, over that this range from, you know, in this case zero to 100. Uh, and the other interesting piece of information that a variogram gives us is what's called the nugget, which is the variance at, at lag zero. So if we, you know, are fitting uh, these functions and we extrapolate back to zero, that uh, that y-intercept value is often positive, indicating that even at very small distances, there's some additional uh, residual error that is not attributed to space. It kind of that's a good way of thinking about the nugget. It's, it's the residual variance uh, that's, that doesn't have a spatial component to it. It's it's there even if you, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's there even if you if you account for spatial autocorrelation, and th and that shows up a lot in, in environmental data because there's things that are kind of uh, noisy and stochastic even at, at short distances. So, you know, if I'm, you know, counting, you know, individuals in a plot, you know, even when I have two plots next to each other, there's going to be kind of this, this there's still gonna be that sort of random Poisson process between in the counting of, of things in a plot. Uh, if I'm taking, you know, a soil core, we'll often find that you know, soils are incredibly heterogeneous at, at very small spatial scales. If I'm sampling the atmosphere or the ocean, we still have turbulence at very small spatial scales. Um, yeah. So this is an example of 
calculating a variogram, I can use it, do this again within the, the R spatial package, passing similar to the, the spatial correlogram, the spatial variogram, I'm passing in the, the, the surface, the object that comes out of fitting the trend surface, which you know, obviously has the residuals within it, uh, and the uh, number of bins, and uh, this function is just called variogram, and it generates you know, these x and y coordinates of the distance bins on the x and the, the semivariances on the y. In this case, we see uh, that the semivariance asymptotes to a value around 12. Uh, we see that it hits that asymptote at about five, so that's kind of the range in this data. And in this particular example, the, the nugget is, is very small. So the, the, this, in this case, the nugget is basically zero. At, at zero distance, there's really uh, no additional variance uh, that's attributed to non-spatial processes. And we kind of see this rise up and this asymptote over. And we'll see that, you also see that variograms sometimes take on different shapes. So this one kind of almost has a, like a logistic-like shape where it's kind of, kind of growing exponentially and then uh, asymptoting up, sometimes they'll have much more of an exponential shape where they just kind of go up an asymptote um, or other shapes in between. Uh, so the last point I wanted to make about uh, spatial uh, autocorrelation is that there is a, a, a important relationship between spatial covariance and the two uh, diagnostics that we both looked at. So if we define spatial correlation, spatial covariance is the covariance at some distance uh, between you know, points x and points x uh, plus d, some distance away. Uh, um, so if we have a covariance between two points, then the autocorrelation rho at some distance is just that covariance normalized by the covariance at lag at distance zero, uh, which is the same thing we use for the definition of a, a, a correlation coefficient in all contexts, even in non-spatial context. Uh, you know, we're, we're normalizing it by the variance. Uh, and then in the variogram, gamma, uh, the, the, the semivariance at some distance uh, instead of being the, the ratio of uh, the covariance at some lag and the covariance at some at, at zero, it's just the difference uh, between the the, vari the covariance at some distance and the covariance at, at zero. So the, the, these three concepts, uh, spatial covariance, spatial autocorrelation, and the variogram, these semivariances are all, you know, they're not the same, but they're all closely uh, related to each other. And, and ultimately, uh, you know, uh, autocorrelation and, and semivariograms are both derived from this underlying idea of spatial covariance, which will be the key later on to talking about spatial, um, spatial, spatial data models.